Hello, this is a quick recording on how to get started with Unreal JS. First of all, we need to create a new project. So, new project blueprints, fine. Name this test. Yes. Okay, so this is starting from a blank project. Uh, first, we need to install the plugin. Uh, it should not be in the current plugins. Uh, so if we go to the Unreal JS website, we can find it under its download here, the pre-built Unreal JS plugin. Uh, this is the one I used, so the pre-built binaries, Win64. Grab that zip. Essentially the plugin. Once we've got that, we just put it inside the project that we've just created. Which is... Yeah. So just drag this plugin folder in there. The plugin folder is at the same level as the config and the content. And if we go in there, we can see Unreal JS is in here. Um, if you have npm install, you can actually go inside the content scripts in the command line and install the required libraries for uh, all the examples. So with that done, uh, we have the plugin installed inside of the project. It can also be installed at the engine level um, with that done, if I restart the project, what we'll see is inside the contents of my project, currently not much, it will add some stuff in there at the first start of the project. So back to this, start the new project. Okay, so a couple of things have happened now. In our contents folder, we now have a script which has been generated when we started the IDE, which contains a aliases JS and the typings required to uh, get the autocompletion working. Um, the other thing that will happen is in the plugins list, we should have a new programming and we should be seeing it here enabled. And with that enabled, we get the new developer tool, JavaScript console. And we can quickly test it by going 2 plus 2, which executes some JavaScript, which gives us 4. If we were to type this in the regular console, that wouldn't do anything. So that shows us that JavaScript is working. And if we type process.platform in the JavaScript console, we see, uh, we see Unreal JS. So that means that we have V8 successfully working inside of um, Unreal Engine but it's not very useful at this point. We can't do much with it. So I'll show a couple of extra steps. Um, if we go to the website and we actually download the entire um, project, the repo, it's a good idea to do so anyway because you will want to look at the example so you might as well grab the whole thing. So this just downloads all the sources. There's an extra file that we need to grab from here in order to bootstrap the environment. It's gonna stick that inside the project. Uh, no, let's stick that on this level. Well, I currently have it here. And in example content scripts, we find a bootstrap.js, which currently is not pushed with the aliases by default, but I think it will be in the future. We need to grab that and put that back into our project.
along alongside with the typings and the aliases. This will be useful to actually make the engine um, available in JavaScript. <clears throat> okay, so a couple of things here. Uh, first of all, we're pretty much ready to go now. Um, but we need an ID that will be able to read the typing so that we get the autocompletion. Uh, you could use Sublime or any kind of ID, uh, but um, it works really well with Visual Studio Code. So let's get that going. And I'll open a folder. I'll just create a new file here. Actually, I'll just open this one. Then I'll open the folder parent to it. Actually, back to content scripts. Okay, so this is the root of my project here. And so we can create a new test.js, which has been put then in our content scripts, which it doesn't do anything at the moment. Just for now, I'll just do a console log. And inside of um, this project that we have now, we'll hook up the JavaScript file to start up. So if I have this level here, for example, I'll just create a new actor. So I'll just put an empty actor here. And we have a new component that's part of the plugin called JavaScript. Okay, and then in there we can type in the source file that we want to execute. In this case, that's JS. Save this level. Okay. Not mobile. This one. And so when we fire this up, what we can see in the console is that JavaScript printed test, which is what we wanted from there. So now what we want to do is actually affect the world in the engine because it's not very useful to just have JavaScript execute when we just place an actor, although that could be what you want, but you probably want to have access to the player controller and the world in general. To do so, um, there's a neat pattern that the author has developed, which I'll just go ahead and copy. So if we take one of these Example this one, uh, scripts. Have a look, a couple of them. This one's simple enough. Yep, so this is essentially the pattern. Grab this, and we'll grab the typings as well while we're there. This file is called test. So at the start, <clears throat> it's going to wait for the next tick to then call the cleanup function, which happens to be main. So it'll execute this at the start. And uh, it will get the bootstrap JS and this file. And it will access the, we'll get the typings from this reference file. So this is a, a syntax that JavaScript uses uh, to, it's actually TypeScript, to get access to the declaration of what the objects look like. Uh, JavaScript being a dynamic language, you would see just about, you could stuff anything into an object. This actually describes how the objects are presented. So it's a bunch of declaration showing what's in the actual Unreal Engine objects that we have access to. Uh, and it's really useful if you're going to type some JavaScript to actually have autocomplete. Otherwise, it's really painful. So. This example is going to place some hello world text into our world. So when the function main is created, it's going to create a text render actor, etc., and place it. It's going to set the, uh, the alignment to center. And um, the main function also returns a function, which is how to destroy itself, how to clean up, so that when you load another level, you don't leak memory. And we can see the text here appearing. 
essentially on begin play for the world. And that's essentially it. Now this whole process here is just a pattern so that you can actually run the game. You could change this without the whole thing crashing. You can see the game is still there. So let me just fire this up in this viewport. So you can see Hello World here. I'm going to free the, free the mouse. And as I come back to Unreal Engine, you can see that within the world, this is updated. Essentially, it's a pattern to allow us to have hot reload. That you can change code and it updates here. If you were to create new variables, new functions, and stuff like that, it will blow up because I don't think it's capable of doing the hot reload when you're adding something brand new to memory that wasn't created. But it's very handy otherwise. So I would suggest sticking to this pattern. And this pattern in general is a, a standard JavaScript pattern of a self executable function to not um, pollute the global scope. We actually pass ourselves the this object into this function, which has its own little world, and we can create variable in here without affecting the global scope and such. That's about it. I hope that, help, that was helpful. Um, and um, this is just a guide to get started with Unreal JS. Uh, I would suggest looking at in the example once you've got this going, especially the Hello Blueprint is very useful or actually extending an actor. And uh, to be able to override the functions uh, in a blueprint. I might as well just push that in now. So uh, it's fairly easy to do. So if I grab this whole thing, And I might push this into a new file. Uh, test2.js. Test2. So we're going to create a new blueprint called BP based on an actor, for example. Could be a character, could be anything. Put him in the world. So this is going to look for the blueprint called BP, generate class. And it's going to override this actor's code. And actually, this will automatically create it for us. We'll actually push it into the world. Yep, so I don't need to actually place it in the world. And what it's going to do over, uh, is to override some of the functions and events that this actor has. So this is useful to make Blueprint communicate to JavaScript. So if I were to have a function called testes, I'm going to print something bogus here like this should be overridden. This should well. This is this is blueprint. And this one says this is test. Well, this is JavaScript. And we take a parameter here, which I'm not even going to do right now. Let's see if this works. This is off the cuffs. Might not work first way. didn't because I think I need to hook up this test these two here these test two so many tests okay so hello this is my actor has kicked in which is the receive begin play on this um, blueprint that's been created so I believe that BP is now running in the world it's been instantiated by this which then received the begin play. 
which then console log this, hello, this is my actor. Um, so what we want to do now is to actually call this function. We can do this from a blueprint. Um, I might do this from the... Uh, I'll, I'll just do this from the begin play. I'll set a delay, which is then going to call this function testes. So if it does not override the code, we would see this. And if the override works, we'll see this. And so we see that it worked. JavaScript, this is JavaScript. Undefined because we're calling it X, which does not exist. So this is how you override a blueprint function inside of JavaScript. And you can then execute some code in JavaScript. For example, contact a remote server and that sort of jazz. And then provide the information back to the blueprint. Uh, so this, this is actually overridden. Overwritten? Apologize. I'll just override. Overwritten. Okay. And in the begin play, I was to put a number in there. Does five. JavaScript did receive the five from X. So then again, I, I recommend looking at this uh, example, uh, the Hello Blueprint. And that should be pretty much everything you need to know to get started with Unreal JS and to get access to um, get the communication going between the blueprint and JavaScript. Thank you.